they tend to be quite forgiving. Don't you just love philodendrons? They're the best. As far as the potty mix is concerned, I went ahead and I used a mix that has some nice organic matter in it, to which I added some orchid bark, some perlite, some sand. One thing I will say though, if you're using a mix that has a fair amount of organic material in it, you need to be prepared to repot it again, probably within, I'd say 12 to 18 months. The reason for that is that, well, organic matter is going to decompose. And when it decomposes, it will compact. And when it compacts, it'll hold more moisture. Yep. Yep, four years. All right, so it's been a minute. <laughs> By a minute, <laughs> four years. Sometimes time just gets away from us and forget that you need to do certain things like repot <laughs> very overgrown philodendron. So yeah, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm, I'm great, looking forward to repotting this plant. Pardon the mess, this, this happened. Things are all over the place. This plant, I figured I should film it. I was going to just repot it and then I was looking at the soil and just the overall characteristics of the plant and you can just, you know, how lovely it's doing. Look at that leaf, isn't that just fantastic? Done the video on repotting these before, so that's really not going to be much of the point here. However, I do think it's good to talk about just how do we know when it's time to repot a plant? This philodendron here, or actually thematophyllum, this is a thematophyllum bipinatifidum. That's what you see right here, bipinate, it's in those leaves. Was a philodendron been reclassified, I'll probably go back and forth with the terminology. I'll just call it bipinatifidum, just to keep it simple. It can be really easy to have a plant that's just tough and you think, all right, it's fine. If there are other things that are more important, I'll get to worrying about that one later. And that's, that's what the case is with this one. Overall, sturdy plant, a low fuss one. And so it got put on the back burner when other more important plants needed to be repotted. I was looking at this, I had it down on the other end of the patio and just kind of peering down at the soil there and I was thinking, hey, that looks kind of compacted, doesn't it? Compacted and muddy, which now that watching back that clip from when this originally got potted up four years ago, that would make some sense. There's organic materials in here that breaks down over time and the soil starts to become muddy. Not much oxygen is getting down there around the roots, which is never a good thing. So it's time to, it's, it's this thing, it needs a fresh mix. That's kind of cool. Doesn't that look neat? Whirly aerial root action going on on that trunk there, on that stem. Fine. Neither here nor there, just very easily distracted. All that aside, I didn't need to look at the soil to really know if this needed to be repotted because it's been a long time. This is a plant that should be putting out large, big, deep green leaves and instead it's just occasionally throwing out these tiny little wimpy things. And that's a telltale sign that the plant's not getting the nutrients that it needs then it's become pot bound and it would just appreciate some more space to get moving and have optimal ideal conditions. This is one of those plants where people will have these for decades, pass them down generation to generation, and oftentimes you'll hear about them never repotting them, like ever. And that's, that's great if you're one of those people. But if you're looking at your plant and it looks like this, it needs a bigger pot. So it's more than likely going to be the case with all these tiny little leaves. They should be much, much, much larger than this. And then specifically when it comes to this plant right here, the bipinatifidum, they do like a larger container for their roots. They'll spread those roots out and tend to get larger foliage off of them when they have more root space. So it's, this is, I mean, can you, this is pathetic, right? That's not going to do. Plant's not performing as it should be. Leaves are pretty black, not living up to the characteristics of what you should see in them. The soil looks like it started to become more compact, so there's not going to be as much airflow down in there. There's roots, some roots coming out the top of the pot, not really many. There's aerial roots, so that's something to expect with these. I'm not seeing any of the feeder roots down there. There's probably a few of those feeder roots coming up. And then looking at the bottom of the pot, roots are starting to come out from down there as well. When they're coming out the bottom and the top, it's going to feel tight too, right? Pretty compacted in there. And poor performance out of the plant in general, time to repot it. I'm going to be bumping this up into a much larger container. This is a 24 inch pot. And I believe that that one down there is kind of an awkward size. Maybe a 14 inch would be my guess. I was going to move it into this container right here. Then I had them side by side and just figured that that's really, that's not much of an upgrade. And it's probably going to be another couple of years until I do this again. So I might as well go ahead and move it up into something nice and big that it can hang out in for a much longer time. But we have that general rule of thumb every, what, 18 to 24 months, something like that, depending on the plant. How often should repot a house plant, but is it really though? I like to repot my plants based on what I see going on with the growth, 
the soil, just everything I mentioned before. How's the plant performing? It's not performing well and everything else is happening for it that should be getting the proper minerals through fertilizing, getting the proper hydration, proper light, and it still just doesn't look quite, part of my phone, and it still isn't looking quite right, then I need to bump it up. I've added a good amount of extra drainage down there into the bottom of the pot. Nice big holes, one in the middle, and I put one on each side so you can see here so when this sits, water can still drain out. I've had pots before that even though there's a channel in here for the water to get out, I don't always trust it. Now, so I don't know why I'm talking about this so much since I said this wasn't really going to be a repot video. It was figured since the plant's an OG, it's been around the channel for a long time, it deserves its own video getting repotted. We'll very briefly go over what I'm going to do with it though. This is an all-purpose potting mix. This one's made by Espoma. It's really light and fluffy. It already has a good amount of chunk in it. <laughs> is that a good way to describe it? I've been using this for a while now and it does dry and drain very well. But since this is an aeroid, it's a plant that wants more oxygen around the roots. I do have not a ton, but some big, big, big chunky perlite to put in there. And then some nice big chunky orchid mix. If you can see right here that also has some carbon in it. Chunky pieces of perlite. There's also chunky peat in there, which I'm not really a fan of, but it's what was in the blend. So I'm just going to go ahead and use it. If I want it to hold on to more moisture, I would add compost into it. I'm going to blend it up and see what it looks like before I make that call. There's no way this is gonna be enough soil. I'll probably need to mix up some more. Okay, that was fun. All the background, everything, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we're smart, you got what's going on there. What I'm really interested to see, I wonder what the roots are looking like in here. It's been four years. It's been in and out through the cold. This plant has taken an awful lot of cold. It's had sun damage from being moved outside too quickly. It's had a good amount of setbacks. So I want to know what's happening in there. All right, go ahead and lift this out of the container and see what's going on there. Hey, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. I was expecting this to be much, much, much worse. Nowhere near as compacted as I thought it would be. The majority of the roots look like they're alive. None of them are like wilted down and papery. This is pretty nice. Not seeing a root wrap, even in the bottom looking pretty good. One thing I do need to do here is I need to go shake out the, not all the soil, I'll try and get a bunch of it out of there, but the bottom layer does have gravel in it and I'm not going to use gravel in this other container, so I need to get that out of there. I guess I could, no, I'll take it out. I think that'll do. I got a good amount of the soil out from the bottom. There's still some gravel in there, but not too much. Not worried about having gravel in the bottom of the container. I don't know if you noticed, but the roots were the most dense where that gravel is, that horrible dreaded gravel that everybody says don't use in your containers. Which is true to an extent. It does slow down the speed at which the water can flush through evenly. The idea is that as the water moves through the soil, it then hits a change in the density and then the rate that it's moving down, the water is draining through, slows down drastically, which will cause some root rot issues. While valid, something I worry more about with things like succulents, yuccas, those types of plants. As long as you don't overwater the plant, that shouldn't be a problem. Again though, that's not true with all plants, so better safe than sorry. Just don't use gravel if that's something you're concerned about. I've just gotten with using it for too long. I've gotten too comfortable. I use it in some of my containers to keep them from blowing over and it's never been a problem. I'm excited to finally give this plant the life it deserves. I'm trying to estimate how much soil I should put in the bottom. Oh yeah, I don't have anywhere near enough of this blended up. Now that should be about the right height. I like to make sure that there's about an inch or so in there so I can flood the pot nice and heavily if I need to. There's a good three inches of soil below the root ball and there's space in here for about, I'd say three inches on the outside diameter. So this is gonna have a lot of time and a lot of room to grow. I actually, I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Screw it, I'll just, I'll just put it all in there, that's fine, okay. There we go. That's looking a lot better. All right, I'm gonna go ahead, make some more soil and uh, make up my mind about whether or not I wanna add some compost into this. The rest of my potting soil was wet. Fun to try and get blended up. I may end up in the future adding some sand into this mix. And by I may, I, I mean, I almost definitely will top dress this with some sand just because this is a blend that Espoma mix has a lot of organic material in it and I just feel like it's going to clog up faster than if I were just going with a completely soilless blend like miracle Grow. That's why I was on the fence about adding compost into this mix because it already has alfalfa meal and I think it's like yucca root, yucca root extract, feather meal. Like it has a lot of organic material already in it. So I just don't think it needs more. Now, despite how it looks right now, I know this looks pretty gross, mucky and muddy, 
it is a blend that does dry fairly quickly. It's just absolutely sopping wet right now. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, sand. I'll probably put a very heavy layer of sand down on top of this. I'm just, I'm out right now. An easy thing to get added into a mixture after you've already done your planting. You just top dress it and water it in with a decently high pressure. Oh, hi, worm. You can come live in here, that's fine. Sand will work its way down on its own, no problem. So going through and checking to make sure that the bark chips and the perlite and everything got evenly distributed. The soil being wet made it a little bit more difficult to get it blended up evenly, but I think this is good, with the exception of the sand. I need to, I need to add sand. That's a big lip, a couple inches down. I actually could probably even throw a little bit more soil in here. I'm gonna water it in first, which I'm gonna hold off on because it's supposed to rain here pretty soon. I don't wanna make a mess right over here where I have all the filming equipment set up, but that'll help work the bubbles out. It's just the same thing over and over again until the pot's full, not rocket science here. This is what I would call a much more appropriate planter for this plant. It's a nice big area for those roots to grow out. I would imagine once it starts to establish itself, it'll start to put out some larger foliage. I'm going to keep this in a spot that just gets filtered morning light for the next few weeks, only because the plant's just now been repotted, so don't want to overdo it, don't want to shock it. It's going to be an area where I have drip emitters or really misters that will keep the area very moist and humid, help get those roots moving. Look forward to watching its progress, seeing how it grows getting some bigger leaves out of it. Uh, oh, and I, I just like totally stopped my train of thought before. Indirect morning light that's filtered, and then after a month or so, I'll move it into a location where it'll get still filtered light, probably bright direct morning sun, and then filtered light throughout the rest of the day. I found that I get much better growth out of these if I give them pretty bright, intense light. Even though they're a shade tolerant plant, it's just more stout growth on them. Comment down below, say hi. How your bipinatifidum's doing. I know most of y'all who are watching probably have them. I have other videos on this plant. I will link them below or have them or both in the time card at the end of the little things that pop up here at the end of the video. If you like actually wanted an informative video about repotting these or dividing them up, I'll, you know, all that stuff. This video is more of a, hey, how you doing? It's been four years. <laughs> Let's go ahead and give this plant the life it deserves. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.